Hello friends, welcome to JavaScript video tutorial series. From the past few video tutorials, we are trying to understand JavaScript typecasting. We know that if required, programmers can also convert one type of a value to another type, which is known as explicit typecasting. To perform explicit typecasting, we use different functions like parse int, parse float, and eval function. In the previous video tutorials, we discussed parse int and parse float functions. In this video tutorial, I would like to discuss eval function. As the name itself indicating, eval function tries to evaluate the given value and returns a number, otherwise returns an error. The value given to the eval function can be a number, an expression, a string or a JavaScript code. Let's see the demonstration and get clear idea. I go to notepad. I have already opened default.html. In the notepad, it has the basic HTML document structure code written. Title is set to JavaScript typecasting. In the body section, I have written opening script and closing script tag. I already opened default.html in the Chrome. Title is set to JavaScript typecasting. In between the script tag, here I say document.write. To the write function, I give eval function. To the eval function, I give an integer number 2, semicolon. What eval function does? It checks whether the given value is a number. If it is a number, it returns that number back to the write function here. And the write function displays 2 on the screen. Let's see that. I say here eval. To the eval, I give 2. File, save, go to browser and refresh. I got the output 2 on the screen. I copy this code, paste down and here I say break. I paste one more time. Instead of eval, I give here parse int. What parse int does? It checks whether the given value is an integer number. If it is an integer number, it returns the number as it is. Then the write function displays the given value. So it displays 2 on the screen. Here I say parse int file, save, go to browser and refresh. I got the output 2 on the screen. I copy this code, paste down. I copy this code, paste down. Instead of parse int, I say here parse float. What parse float function does? It checks whether the given number is a float. If it is not, it tries to convert that number to a float. So here the 2 is going to be converted to 2.0 and given to the write function. What write function does? It displays the integer part. 2 on the screen because the given number has only zeros in the float part right so let me say here parse float and say 2 file save go to browser and refresh we got the output 2 on the screen i think now you understood the difference between eval parse int and parse float what they do eval checks for a number parse int checks for an integer parse float check for a float right what if we give a floating point number let's see that i copy this line paste down i copy this code paste down here i say 3.142 as we know that eval checks whether the given value is a number if it is it returns that number as it is so we get the output 3.142 on the screen file save go to browser and refresh we got the output 3.142 copy this code paste down, I copy this code, paste down, here I say 3.142. What parsint function does? It checks whether the given value is an integer number. No, it's a floating point number. So parsint function converts the floating point number to an integer. So it discards the float part, it only returns the integer part 3 to the document.write function. And document.write function displays 3 on the screen. Parse int 3.142 bracket close file save go to browser and refresh we got 3 on the screen not 3.142 right i copy this paste down i copy this line paste down here i say 3.142 what parse float function does it checks whether the given value is a float number yes it's a float number it returns as it is 3.142 to the write function and the write function displays 3.142 file save go to browser and refresh we got the output 3.142 i think you are getting the difference between 
all the three type of uh, functions right let's see more what happens when we give expressions let's give expressions to all these three functions I copy this code paste down copy this code paste down here I say 2 plus 2 now we are giving expression to the eval function eval function evaluates the given value 2 plus 2 is 4 4 will be given to the right function and the right function displays 4 on the screen file save go to browser and refresh you can see that we got 4 on the screen I copy this line paste down I copy the code paste down here I say 2 plus 2 we know that the parseInt function what it does it evaluates 2 plus 2 to 4 okay we got 4 4 will be given to the integer parseInt function the parseInt function returns that 4 to the right function and the right function displays 4 on the screen file save go to browser and refresh we got the 4 on the screen I copy this code paste down I copy this code paste down to the parse float function we give 2 plus 2 what happens here 2 plus 2 evaluates to 4 4 will be given to the parse float function the parse float function converts that integer 4 to an equivalent 4.0 floating point number and the write function displays 4 on the screen it discards the float part because the float part has only zeros right so I say here parse float 2 plus 2 file save go to browser and refresh we got the output 4 let's see more examples I copy this code paste down I copy this code paste down so here the expression is evaluating to an integer number let's see what happens when we give float number so here I say 1.6 here I say 1.6 what eval function does of course first the expression is going to be evaluated 1.6 plus 1.6 is 3.2 so 3.2 will be returned back to the write function write function displays 3.2 right let's see that 1.6 plus 1.6 file save go to browser and refresh we got the output 3.2 I, I copy this code paste down I copy this code paste down here I say 1.6 here I say 1.6 1.6 1.6 evaluates to 3.2 what parseInt function does it converts the float number to an integer number so it returns only the integer part 3 to the right function and we get the output 3 on the screen let's see that parse int 1.6 plus 1.6 bracket close file save go to browser and refresh we got the output 3 on the screen I copy this line paste down I copy this line paste down here I say 1.6 and 1.6 first 1.6 1.6 evaluated to 3.2 3.2 will be given to the parse float function the parse float function returns that 3.2 to the write function so the write function displays 3.2 on the screen file save go to browser and refresh you can see we got the output 3.2 on the screen only difference you find is the parse int function there right the parse int function is behaving little different because it tries to convert the given float to an integer it returns only the integer part right whereas the eval function and parse float are more accurate they are giving the proper result to us let me copy this code paste down now we understood what happens when we give a number an integer number what happens when we give a float number what happens when we give an integer expression what happens when an expression evaluates to a float number let's see now what happens when we give a string value copy that and paste down to the eval function let's see what I have next is if I give some integer uh, some string like 24 some text let's see what happens I say here a string 24 some text bracket close when you give some string to an eval function the eval function tries to evaluate the expression given in a string here this is not going to be evaluated this is not going to result to a number right even though you try to convert it it is not going to be converted to a number so we get an error here actually if I say file save go to browser I just open the developer tools okay if I refresh you see you get an error here and if I click on this 
link you can see it is telling in this line you have an error unexpected identifier so the eval function tries to evaluate the value which is you have you have given in a string if it is not evaluated to a number it returns an error so this leads to an error friends so here i say error let's see what happens when we give it to an integer so i copy this and paste down i copy this and paste here we know that the parse int function extracts the beginning integer part that is it extracts the 24 and gives that 24 to the write function the write function displays 24 on the screen we don't get any error file save to the browser and refresh we got the output 24 right similarly i copy this break paste down and i copy this code paste down to the float i give the string 24 some text we know that the parse float function extracts and returns the beginning float part here we have anyhow integer part 24 it returns the 24 only back to the write function and we get the 24 on the screen file save go to browser and refresh we got the 24 you can see that even i can say here a float 3.142 we know that 3.142 is extracted by the parse float function and it returns that 3.142 the write function the write function displays 3 point one four two on the screen file save go to browser and refresh we got the output three point one four two hope you guys have clearly understood what happens when we pass a string to an eval function pass int function and a parse float function right next we pass an expression which is in a string actually so let's see what happens i copy this code paste down i copy this code paste down to the eval function i give a string containing an expression 2 plus 2 here what happens means the eval function evaluates the expression given in a string also so 2 plus 2 is going to be evaluated to 4 and the 4 will be converted to a number given to the write function and the write function displays 4 on the screen file save go to browser and refresh we got the output 4 okay i copy this code paste down i copy this code paste down here i say 2 plus 2 you can see that to the parse int function i am passing an expression in a string what parse int function does if it is a string it returns the beginning integer part here the 2 is the beginning integer part the parse int function will not evaluate the expression in a string it just returns the beginning integer part so here we get 2 not 4 file save go to browser and refresh you can see that it is giving us 2 not 4 whereas eval function evaluating an expression given in a string so that's the difference between parse int and eval let me copy this and paste down and i copy this code paste down here i say 1.6 plus 1.6 we know that the parse float function returns the beginning float part of a string so here 1.6 is going to be returned back 1.6 is going to be returned back file save go to browser and refresh we got 1.6 right it is not evaluating the parse float function is not going to evaluate whereas the eval function is going to evaluate the given expression even though it is in a string so here i say 1.6 and here i say 1.6 okay, file save go to browser and refresh we got 3.2 right i hope you guys have clearly understood how, what is the difference between eval parse int parse float function i give more examples i copy this code and paste down and here i say document dot write eval semicolon to the eval function in a string i can say were a equal to 10 equal to 10 i am giving a javascript statement you can see that i am creating a variable a equal to 10 and i tell a semicolon i am going to give the value of a to the eval function 
I'm writing directly a JavaScript code. If I say file save, go to browser and refresh, I get the output 10 on the screen. Eval function has the capability to execute a JavaScript code also. If you give a JavaScript code also to the eval function, it executes that. Whereas parse int and parse float don't. They don't execute the ev uh, JavaScript code. Okay. They return not a number actually. For example, let me copy this code and paste down. Let me copy this code and paste down. If I give it to the parse int function, p a r s c parse int function, we know that it tries to extract the beginning integer part. So there is no beginning integer part because the string is starting with a character. So definitely it returns not a number on the screen. File save, go to browser and refresh, we get not a number. Similarly, I copy this code and paste down. Here I say parse float. If I give a JavaScript code to the parse float function, of course the parse float function tries to extract the beginning float part. So there is no beginning float part. It is beginning with a character. It also returns not a number on the screen. File save, go to browser and refresh. We got not a number. Whereas the eval function has more capability. It is it has the capability to execute the JavaScript code also. For example, I can create one more variable here b equal to 10 and I can say here display the value of b file save go to let me say here 20 better file save go to browser and refresh I got the value 20 here similarly I can say comma c equal to a plus b and I can display the value of c on the screen file save go to browser and refresh I got the output 30 on the screen so the eval function evaluates the given value. If it is a string, it tries to evaluate the given expression. If possible, it evaluates that expression and returns a number. If the evaluated expression returns not a number, then it returns an error message. It gives an error. And eval has the capability to execute the JavaScript code. Hence, it is recommended not to use eval function. Because if you are accepting a value from the target audience or a user, he might enter a JavaScript code, right? So that is a harmful program. Eval function should be used when you are not accepting any value from the user. If you are accepting any value from the user, he might enter a JavaScript code and eval function executes that. And that JavaScript code might harm your website. Understanding? But eval function is more powerful. Okay. Hope you guys have clearly understood what is the difference between eval function, parse int function, parse float function, whether to use eval or not, when to use the eval function. So for this tutorial, this much is enough friends. We see more examples. You get more clear idea about the JavaScript codes. We discuss a lot of real time examples so that you understand when to use what. For this video tutorial, this much is enough friends. For more benefits and be up to date, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to like, comment and share these videos with others so that everyone will get benefited. Keep learning, keep coding, keep sharing. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. See you in the next tutorial.